Session 1 now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Therefore, when we could bear it no longer, we were willing to be left behind at Athens alone, so that we there would be Paul and Silvanus, because Timothy is going to be sent. We were willing to be left behind at Athens alone, and we sent Timothy our brother and God's co-worker in the gospel of Christ, to establish and exhort you in your faith that no one be shaken by these afflictions. For you yourselves know that we are destined for this. For when we were with you, we kept telling you beforehand that we were to suffer affliction just as it has come to pass, and just as you know. For this reason, when I could bear it no longer, I sent to learn about your faith, lest somehow the tempter had tempted you, and our labor would be in vain. Father, I pray that as we focus now on Paul's intention to send Timothy, to them, and his reasons for doing so, and the threats to their faith that were happening, you would grant us to discern how to live our lives in relation to people that we care about, whose faith might be jeopardized. I pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Therefore, what had just gone before was, what is our hope? or joy, or crown of boasting before the Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not you? You are our glory and our joy. Therefore, if your faith is threatened, if you might possibly make shipwreck of your faith, we, we've got to act. We've got to find out. We've got to do something. That's the connection. Therefore, when we could bear it no longer, Now, we could bear it no longer is repeated, isn't it? Now, here, verse 5, when I could bear it no longer, we were willing to be left behind at Athens alone, and we sent Timothy. And here, I sent Timothy to learn about your faith. So you've got this repetition of this. Couldn't bear it, couldn't bear it, sent Timothy, sent Timothy. And so we should ponder what's in the middle. And I'm going to uh, draw it like this. You yourselves know that we were destined for this. So I'm going to close up 3b here through verse 4, because that's the support in the middle for why this and this happened. And you can tell that because it begins with because, or for, for you yourselves know that we're destined for this, these afflictions here. And he doesn't want them to be shaken by them. And we're going to talk about that in the future. Is Why would it help them not to be shaken by the afflictions if they knew they were destined for them? They were predestined planned by God, that that causes some people to say, that's no help. If I, if I know that God's planning my troubles, how's that going to comfort me? So we'll get to that in due time. And then, um, for this reason, shows that this support here is supporting in this direction as well as this direction. So you have a for here and a therefore here. For this reason is the same as Therefore, you realize that what's in the middle here is functioning to support this way and this way. So this, when we were with you, we kept telling you beforehand that we were to suffer affliction just as it has come to pass, is the reason why he could bear it no longer and needed to find out about their faith, and the reason why he wanted to send Timothy and establish them 
in their affliction. So we'll we'll ponder that in future sessions. But let's go back to the beginning here. Therefore, when we could bear it no longer, we were willing to be left behind at Athens alone. And I think the stressing that we were willing to be left behind at Athens alone is simply to gently say, it's a trial to be here in Athens. Athens is a hard place. There are idols everywhere. Timothy is a faithful co-worker, and we need him, but we're going to give him up. In other words, he's protesting again how much he loves them, how much he cares for them by sending Timothy to them. I think that's the reason for Athens and alone and left behind. We sent Timothy to you, our brother and God's co-worker in the gospel of Christ. Notice, it's God's co-worker, not our co-worker. That's amazing. And I think the reason he says it like that, God's co-worker in the gospel. So God's at work using the gospel in your life to establish you. But here I am sending a human being to establish you and exhort you. This is just huge. This is theologically so important. How easy we can swing the pendulum to the divine side or the human side and say, oh, God is the one who clearly has to hold on to them and establish them and keep them from messing up and making shipwreck and everything would be in vain. God is the one who has to do that. Well, that's true. That's true. But what's also true is that God has ordained to use his co workers. So Timothy is not just Paul's co worker, he's God's co worker. And so by using this phrase, Paul elevates Timothy in their eyes to the point where they, they realize oh, he's sending us Timothy not because God can't do it. God can't keep us, but because God, in his providence, has ordained that he will use Paul to evangelize them and Timothy to go strengthen them. That's a very important realization to say he's God's co-worker and establishes them, and therefore he sends, we will willing to be left behind, and sent Timothy, he didn't not, he does not just pray. You ever thought of that? So there's somebody that you know who needs to be strengthened in the faith, and all you do is pray for them. When you could talk to them, you could go to them and say some good words of promise and exhortation about their faith so that they wouldn't be shaken. So let's be this way. Let, let's not use our finite, puny, fallible reasons to correct the way the Bible says things should be done. And the Bible says God has co-workers. God loves it when we pray and ask him to do things. And he loves it when we become the answer to our prayers by going to establish people and exhort them. Let me say one other thing quickly. We could bear it no longer. We could bear it no longer. Have you thought how the apostles, or how Paul in particular, made ministry choices about staffing and about travels? How did he do that here? How was the decision made to send Timothy to Thessalonica and be left behind? How did he make it? I'm sure it would be fair to say that Paul was there in Athens and he thought, he, he, he thought about the situation in Thessalonica and what was going on there. And he applied sanctified reflection and thinking. And he probably assessed 
the need in Athens, and he assessed the need in Thessalonica, and he assessed Timothy's gifts and his gifts. And then he he felt all that time, he felt pressure, pressure. This is pressure here. When I could bear it no longer, it's a word about pressure. He was feeling pressure. What was the pressure coming from? The pressure was coming from uncertainty. He wanted to learn about your faith, lest somehow the tempter had tempted them and his labor would have been in vain. That's just huge uncertainty. That's the kind of pressure he felt. And he felt the pressure that it's his job to minister to these people. He led them to Christ and he needs to do something to establish them. He needs to do something to exhort them. He feels the pressure of duty, of obligation. So how did he make the decision? (laughs) He couldn't stand it anymore. I mean, think about this. Sometimes we, we give the impression that discerning the will of God is this logical, rational, deductive process of weighing factors and weighing our gifts and weighing the need and it's it's just not finally like that most of the time most of the time john piper is sitting in his living room feeling pressure that somebody needs to be talked to i got other competing claims on my life but there comes a point when i can't bear it anymore i just got to call him that's okay. It's very messy, right? It's just messy. Messy. Because it's, you're never quite sure. Did I wait too long? Like, we could bear it no longer. What? Did you wait too long, Paul? Should have sent him sooner. No, maybe I should have sent him later. I don't know. I feel like we have to live with messiness in discerning the will of God to meet people's needs. And so let's pray earnestly, let's think hard, and let's feel the pressure, and then let's just be discerning of the Holy Spirit when he somehow, some mysterious way, pushes us over the line and say, no longer, you're out of here, or send Timothy. Lots more to talk about here next time.